Welcome to part two of Scroller Game One Project. Before I do the next challenge, I just noticed I haven't named my game. I should really be doing that right at the beginning, especially in offline mode, so I have a saved version. So I'm going to do a save as, since I'm in the offline editor. And I'm going to go to the directory where I have all my games saved. For me, that's starter games. And I'm going to call this i2 scroller game one. In the online version of Scratch, you just click on the untitled and type your new name and do file, save now. So, so far, students have programmed a spaceship that can be controlled by the keys using different blocks, those sensing blocks, rather than the event blocks that were used in the previous games. Challenge number two was programming the laser to shoot out of the spaceship when the space key is pressed. Now you're ready for challenge number three. Add enemies that disappear when an enemy is destroyed by the laser. So you want an enemy that can be hit by the laser, which destroys the enemy. That means we need a new sprite. They may create their own, not me. I'm going to grab one myself. So for the purposes of this, I'm just going to grab the first one that appears. The one that caught my eye was Beetle. So Beetle is going to be an enemy. I need to be able to shoot my laser at the Beetle and make it disappear. I'm guessing that they might also want to have their Beetle move a little bit or their enemy move a little bit. They know how to do that, just like we did with the ball and continue to do in the maze. So how do we make the beetle disappear? Well, how did we make the apple disappear in the maze game? I want to say when green flag clicked forever, so you keep checking touching but I need to check if I'm actually touching. So forever if touching laser what should this beetle do? It should die. It should disappear. So that's easy to do, right? Hide. But whenever you're putting a hide in, make sure that a show goes at the beginning. So when green flag clicked, show the beetle, and then check if it's touching a laser, and if it is, hide. Let's see if it works. Move my spaceship, fire, Boom! It worked! Maybe I should also hide the laser once it touches a beetle. Could we copy this script over to laser? And put this inside. Don't like putting it inside here because there are various things changing. I don't want to put it inside this repeat. Let's try just putting it with this forever. If touching laser then, but we don't want to hide, we want to change position back to where the spaceship is, right? Or do we hide? Yeah, why not hide? That's what we're doing at the beginning of the game. We're hiding it and then waiting for the space key to be pressed again to show it. So let's try this and see if it works. Space, hmm, it doesn't work. I'll try it again. Space, doesn't work. Can you figure out why? I said inside of forever, if touching laser, then hide. Well, one problem is it might still be inside this repeat 30 block before it's going back into the forever block and checking the if. So what if we put it inside that repeat 30, since it would be moving? Let's try that. Fire, spacebar. Fire, spacebar. Something about it isn't liking it. It's not showing so I'm going to click stop, space, hmm, still not showing, why? Ooh, look, if laser is touching laser, then hide. Remember we copied the code over? So we actually want to check if you're touching the beetle. So let's try this again, just to rule out whether it works in that position. Space, it still doesn't work. That's what I was expecting, that it wouldn't work. Want to try putting it in the repeat block and see if it works. Fire. Ah, it does disappear. 
but unfortunately it's hiding before the beetle gets the message that it's touching. So the laser is recognizing it's touching the beetle before the beetle does. So Scratch can have trouble recognizing two different sprites colliding with each other. It can have one sprite say, oh yeah, I'm touching, but the other sprite's confused. So there's a way to do that. Couldn't we say, if laser is touching beetle, broadcast a message. Broadcast, before you hide, new message, collide, oh, let's do it this way, touching beetle. Now I don't have to worry about whether things are inside forever repeat or if I can just say when I receive the message touching beetle, hide. Let's try it. Space, they both disappear. Try it again. Space, they both disappear. If I press the space bar again, it appears. So that's working well. The beetle detects that it's touching laser sends a message to the, the, I'm sorry, the laser gets a message from the beetle that says, okay, touching you, so they hide. When I receive touching beetle, hide. And it will show again as soon as I press the space key. But that only allows one beetle. I did say add enemies in the challenge more than one enemy. So they could choose multiple sprites they could have beetle, or they could duplicate the beetle. This would be an easy way to have more than one. So when the green flag is clicked, maybe each of these starts in a different place. Green flag again. I can go one, two, three. I have just finished challenge three. Not so elegant, though. And really, that's probably not what most kids want to have happen. In fact, some will say, I want to hear a sound when they collide. Is there an easy way to play a sound when a beetle collides with the laser? Sure. In the sound category, we could just say play pop. When touching laser, play pop. When touching laser, play pop. When touching laser, play pop. Boop. 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 So that works. Cool. But I don't like having to create multiple sprites this way. Don't you think there'd be an easier way to create copies of a sprite? Let me delete these. And maybe that would also help us with our laser. Because our laser also, we want to maybe have more than one laser appearing at a time. Well, don't go too far. We still have challenge number four. Challenge 4 says display score increasing when an enemy is destroyed. So let's do that one first. I'm going to click the green flag. So when I hit an enemy, it should destroy it. And if I have three enemies, bring those back. Each one I hit should increase the score. So how do we create score? Look in your data category. Can you figure out, by looking at data, how you could create a variable? Maybe that variable could keep track of score and also display score. For your students, you could refer them to the score card. Keep score in the Scratch game design card. So there's an entire card dedicated to adding score to a game. In data, I'm going to click Make a Variable. And what do you want to call this variable? Score. Now as soon as I click OK, look at the stage. OK. It displays that variable on the stage by default. Now I have a variable called score. But if I play my game, nothing's going to happen because I haven't put in the script that would increase that score as a beetle is destroyed. So how would I do that? Well, look at the blocks. You can set score or change score, just like we can set an X position or change an X position or Y position on the stage. You also have the option to show a variable or hide a variable. So if I click hide variable, maybe I don't want to display a variable on the stage. But in this case, we do. So I'm going to leave that variable displayed on the stage. 
I want to add to the score each time a beetle is destroyed. So if I look here, now with multiple beetles I'll have to put this code on each beetle, which is kind of a drag, but I'll do it on the first one, just for you. So on the first beetle, I could say, if touching laser, what? Change score. And let's say 100. But where I put that block is very important. Watch what happens. Click the green flag. I've only added it to one beetle, so which is the beetle? Is it this one? Yes. Click it again. Oh, look, in the new game, it's just increasing. A third game? still increasing. So we want to set the score to zero at the beginning of the game. Doesn't matter which spread I put it on, but I like to put that on the stage or on the spaceship because that's the player. It's just an easy place to do things at the beginning of the game, saying set score to zero. There might be some other values I want to set at the beginning of my game. So remember, I can put code on the stage. In other words, that's not set to a specific sprite. The whole game is using score. And did you also notice when I made the variable here, I wanted to make sure that it was set to all sprites. Different sprites might need to add to that score, not just that first beetle that I put it on. So now, at each time I click the green flag, the score should go to zero, and when I hit that first beetle, it will increase, but not the other beetles. So we could drag this block. Oops, I don't like that so much because it's also dragging the hide or the broadcast block. So how about we'll just say change score by 100 on each of these. Does it matter where I put the block? Maybe. We'll see that in a second. The main thing I wanted to show you is that if you have multiple sprites, every time you make a change to the game, you have to update the scripts on each of those sprites, which is kind of a drag. Does it work? 100, 200, 300. It does. So I am able to destroy all three of those, but right now there's no way to regenerate beetles, and I can only go up to a score of 300. Well, that's not so exciting. You know what else isn't so exciting? The enemies can't attack the player yet. So in the next tutorial, we should look at how to program the enemies to attack. And then also, for challenge 6, allowing more than one laser to be fired at a time. And maybe the coding we use for that will also enable us to have a more elegant way to create multiple enemies. So in the next video, more lasers, more enemies, and allowing the enemies to attack the player.